I think the key issue really is that half the population uh, in urban centres are children. That's those people under the ages of uh, under the age of 18. Um, and I think typically, typically people tend to think of children as vulnerable victims who, have, who live with high levels of disaster risk. But in actual fact, you know, children have uh, have intrinsic values and rights, and have a real um, they really have a lot to offer to to reducing risk in, 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 in cities. So I think you know, children make up half the population of cities. Children, therefore, are not only uh, half of the people that are affected, but they're also half the people who, have, who can do something about it. And uh, what are the sort of uh, work that UNICEF has been doing on the ground to sort of um, encourage children's involvement in these sort of issues? Right. Well, we've been doing a lot of work, uh, not in isolation. We typically work with local government and national government. But we also work with our NGO partners, in particular Plan International and Save the Children and World Vision. Who we do a lot of work at the, at the global level in terms of advocacy for children. But in practical terms, I, I would say there are, there are two, two, two things that I'd like to refer to. One is, is school safety and education. Um, and there are two, two sides. One is making sure that schools are safe. Disasters, whether they're related to climate change or whether they're related to other hazards like earthquakes, interrupt education. Not only does that have a direct impact on children in terms of perhaps mortality if the school collapses, and we know so many schools collapse, but it also means that children drop out of school and miss out on their education, which has a big impact on their development. Um, I think the other side to education that I think is important to note is, is how education itself um, can engage children in taking steps to reduce their risk, to better understand the environment they're working in, and to come up with simple measures that, that can make all the difference if there is a flood. For instance, you know, knowing what to do when there is a flood, when there's an early warning, knowing what to do if there's an earthquake, what to, you know, where to crouch in the building so the building doesn't collapse on you. And those messages are not only retained by children, but they're also communicated back, back to their homes. I think my last point, the last example really, outside of the education I say, is uh, yeah, children have a very good understanding of their environment and they see risks differently in some cases to, to adults. And something we've been doing is, is particularly around, again around schools, but around communities generally, where the children walk around the community and they identify well, what makes them feel safe. You know, you know, as they walk to school, there are things that make them feel safe and unsafe. And those may be bad drains, they may be where there might be flooding, there may be other issues related to their personal protection. So children you know, have valid perspectives which need to be you know, considered in, in planning cities. And do you think currently that um, the, I guess the children's perspective is considered or do you think there still needs to be sort of it needs to be put up a level so that their voices I guess are heard more in the climate debate? I think I think there are there are examples where children are voices are being considered. In the Philippines I can think of a number of examples. We're working with the government of Brazil in Rio, uh, where children have been working with local government to, to map the risks in the community, uh, the risks from flash floods. So children and young people are being listened to, but, but probably not enough. And, and one thing that, that UNICEF and its NGO partners have launched is the Children's Charter on Disaster Risk Reduction, which we launched last year. And more than 600 people have signed up to this charter. And, these were the priorities identified by children themselves. This is what they want to see happen in terms of reducing their risk. And you know, of those 600 people that have signed up, some of those are mayors, some of those are other opinion makers or, or, or people in the UN. And in some cases, action has actually taken place and been followed up in the likes of Mozambique at the local level by, by the mayors or by the, whoever signed up. Um, and just one final question. Um, obviously, a lot of what you've been talking about at this conference has been about the children living in cities, but also how important is it that um, you get out to more rural areas and, and do the same in that? And how, how is that different to the work you might necessarily do in more urban environments? Well, I think that's a very good point. Um, but I think a lot of our experience um, from UNICEF, from NGOs, and from others has actually been in the rural areas. I mean, the experience coming out of the last 30 years in, in aid and development and humanitarian work is largely around the, the rural area and I think we're not as well equipped as we should be to deal with what are going to be huge um, huge disasters in, in, in urban areas so we need to revisit some of the methodologies and tools we use and how we, how we reach out to, to, to children in urban areas because that's going to be different to how, how we reach out to children in rural areas.